Weekend number two in the college volleyball season, and we've got a battle of unbeatens to kick off our coverage of the Clemson Invitational here on ACC Network Extra. Welcome inside Jervy Jim alongside former ACC Player of the Year, Keeley Eveland. I'm Daniel Gilman, so happy to be with you. Happy for a high-powered matchup, Keeley. A pair of teams in the top 10 in kills per set as Jacksonville State and Clemson meet for the first time ever. That's right, Jacksonville State is loaded with experience. They have nearly half of their team seniors or grad students, and Clemson, high jumping, power blockers. So expect a battle at the net today. Well, we'll get to your setters in a minute, but let's start with a matchup at the pin. All-American Lena Kinderman starts for Jacksonville State. You know, alongside Natalie Robinson, I'm Daniel Gilman. Happy to be with you for the fourth match of this Husky invite. We had three yesterday, three more today. Coming out of the Keegan Cook timeout. Pepperdine, still the aggressors here, able to go cross-court well. You know, you were coached by Keegan for a few years, Natalie. What are some of the things he keys in on in the first set during timeouts? I mean, just in general at Washington, they value serving so much. Serving and serve receive, that's really where the games are won. And I don't know if he's going to be thrilled with the team serve receive right now. He also talks a lot about managing out of system, and that's something that we're seeing both teams do really well, but I think Washington, Washington can do better. Claire Hoffman happy to finally get that second kill. She's been looking for it for a while. 11 swings, three errors for the outside. Now joined by her partner in crime in Marin Grode up there. Bay, deep. Now service errors last night. That was ugly from the Huskies. They had 10 service errors, nine aces. That was their first mistake at the service line here today. Pepperdine has quietly stretched their lead to five as Chillingworth returns the favor. They seem to be contagious, Natalie. Yeah. You said that yesterday and I wasn't sure, but I think I agree. Yeah, now that you're on this side of things, yeah. everything opens up more for you. Imani Bush, who started this match with a kill. Uh -oh. Gives it right back three in They're a really row now. your point, Daniel. Oof. Bush, a sophomore from Canada. Missed all of last weekend in Colorado as Washington swept Iowa, came from behind early against Illinois, beat them in four. So four wins in a row for the Huskies as they gear up for a trip to Bozeman, Montana next week. Hoffman on the double block. Great dig by Aarons. Cross court, Rachel Aarons. She may not be as explosive as the years pass in just 140, but every once in a while, the grad senior able to shine. We're seeing a battle of the outsides right now. The waves are putting a lot of pressure on Claire Hoffman with passing, serving her, hopefully they, there we go. <laughs> putting a lot of pressure on her and LMA is feeding her a lot of sets. On Pepperdine side, we're seeing Aarons get a lot of balls in and out of system. Good dig there by Hames. Up. And then Brown able to pick up the first touch. Hoffman off the block. Well, we saw Kaylee Haynes come in and serve, pick up a dig as well. The sister of All-American, Nicklin Haynes, the setter at Nebraska. Two of them were raised by one of the best volleyball players in the world in Christine Haynes, who is on the Australian national team. Their high school coach. Talk about running in the family. Got a lot of family ties here in this matchup. As Grote tips. Big, big swing by Chillingworth, and LMA Powell does it so well. And you know, she went right by the middle blocker. They were ready for her, and she still snuck it by him. As we take another look from setter to setter, Natalie, what is so deceptive about her dump? I mean, LMA goes up with two hands, and she is both experienced and aggressive. She knows which type of dump to utilize to put that ball down. But Claire Hoffman gives it right back. Just her sixth service error of the season. Pepperdine now six points away from nabbing this first set. And look at the merry-go-round by the Wave bench. The Waves had a smooth first set yesterday, 25-22 against Cal Poly. Now Ensley gets the touch. There's an all-region player that may be an X-factor of sorts. You were mentioning that before the match to me. Maddie Ensley, as we kind of walk through what she can bring to the table, what do you see from her on the left side? I mean, Maddie Ensley is a powerful hitter, and as she gets older, more experienced, she's going to learn to manage a lot more of these sets. And 
think she could really shine for the Huskies in this match. A slow start yesterday for her. That was her first kill. Vanessa Polk able to side out quickly and power it through the block to put Pepperdine back up five. Pushing Summers back in the middle for the Huskies. She's been quiet. In fact, Sophie Summers hasn't taken a swing yet after eight kills on 12 attempts yesterday. Rotation one for Pepperdine as Zelaya serves. Great tip up at the net. Oh, a power tip to perfection for Aarons. Rachel Aarons now with two kills on eight swings, but two timely kills sending us into another break. Keegan Cook uses his second timeout. Pepperdine leads 21-15 here on Pac-12 Insider. You have to wonder if Hannah will be needed late in this fifth set to use that veteran power. Maybe some fresh legs tonight as well as Maselli serves to start the fifth. Oh, a smart curving shot hits the back corner and Sam Barnes, seventh kill for the freshman. So you asked me what's it going to take, that pass and serve and then run your middle. Uh, right there, Citadel answering to the call on the first point. Quick side out for a team that has seen that side out percentage dip still up over 60%. And Elgert, oh, off of the ceiling, miscommunicated McGrath. Alligator arms there makes it 2-0. A big point right there, but what the... Clemson needs to do is just take it as one point, but not giving the Citadel five emotional points on just that miscue. Gomez, Delancey, Ruffin in the front row, which means Hogan cannot dump. Catalano tips, great cover by Maselli. Free ball will be gifted. Great block touch. More miscommunication. It's a first to 15 here in this set, and the Citadel looking like the better team. Long point, though, here in the third. Ruffin down the line, three for three, go the Citadel in this fifth set, and an early timeout by Simpson Keir. Wow, this is exactly how the Citadel started yesterday against Jacksonville State, jumped out to a fifth set lead. Off speed shot down the line, Allie Ruffin leading her way in this fifth set. In this battle of teams, an interstate matchup here in the fifth set. One of two timeouts already used by Clemson. And a flying miracle pass there by Moore. Can she get back in position? Yes. McGrath, you need a kill. You get one from the freshman. One thing about McGrath, she just takes care of the ball. So it was over her shoulder. She off-speed shot into the blocker with the good angle to catch. I can love a little geometry. Catch it to get the tool. I'm probably one of few. Much needed side out, <laughs> yeah. What is it, a protractor they use, the tool? <laughs> there you go. Delancey in from the pin there. Big time kill for one of the four middles that have rotated through today in the starting lineup for the Citadel. Using a little geometry here, quickest ways to go a straight line. We're going down to the floor with a beautiful kill put away. Come on, Keely, it's Saturday. No, no <laughs> classes on the weekend. McGrath has to use her left hand here, a bit of a free ball. Ruffin, freshman of the year. Ooh. Oh, it's long. No, it's overturned. Yeah, that looked in from our angle. What about you? I thought it was a little long, and Simpson Keir has a challenge. She will certainly use it. Was it touched? Ooh, it looked long on the video on this first look. Yep. I'll tell you what, we're pretty much lined up with that nine foot line back here. And Got a good look. Now the question is, would Zelenok challenge back on a potential touch? And that view maybe looks in. The line judge initially ruled it out, corrected herself immediately. Jenna Moore getting some clarifications from our up judge today in Steve Berinsky. We have seen all of the emotional roller coasters for Jackie Simpson here, and I think now she's initiated the challenge officially. It's tough. Now, I'll, I'll never forget this. The call that made replay a thing back in 2015 in the NCAA tournament looked a lot like this. I think it was the Elite Eight matchup between Texas and Florida. And there were no challenges back then. It's, it's all a new system, the, the replay reviews all in the last seven years. What do you think? 
I'm, I'm thinking that ball got a little bit of the white line. I'm gonna call that ball in. This call is going to stay with that ball kissing that end line. And Clemson staff is beside themselves. So in maybe the first time ever, we're gonna have to have a stat check on that, right? 0 for 4, the coaches and challenges today. You don't see that often. How about these reviews and replay officials? 5-1, 10 points away, make it nine. That's a big stare down from Hogan on her block. I'm, I want to ask Coach Delnock, where did you find Hogan and how did you find Hogan? Next time I interview him right there, we're going to ask because, gosh, you want to recruit. If she's got little sisters, just find it. It's just locked in a competitor. And Coach Delnock, steady like his team is playing, very steady. Hogan out of Fort Wayne. Cameron Hanna checks in and immediately a service error. Gets a side out for the Tigers. I mean, the good news for Clemson is that Finney's back in your front row. She's your momentum swinger, so you just need to get her the ball. Catalano serves. 6-2 on a race to 15. Good block touch by Hannah. Ruffin. She did get a touch at the net. The block. How about third time? Do they go to Hannah here? No, instead it's a back row attack. Catalano! The soft touch. The trust knowing that Catalano not only was there, but had the ball control to do an inside cut shot with a left-handed move. Watch her go up, it's just trust. I'm moving forward. Moore decides to go back, changing direction with that attack for the finish. Catalano. Clemson, a chance to pull within two. Citadel, an opportunity to stretch the lead. Great dig by Kellerman. Oh, Catalano did cross the line. No call, though. Taylor's there. She has 25 digs. Pinball effect in the play alive. That cutback shot covered by Catalano. Lengthy point here in a pivotal moment in the fifth. Oh. Ruffin finds the line. Clemson's out of challenges even if they wanted to. When you're not winning with power, you win with intelligence. Ruffin recognizing her defender was shifting line, but deep. So I'm going to drop a line shot short and make it really hard to pick up. Allie Ruffin, freshman of the year for the SoCon last year, showing that she's here as a sophomore. 15 kills, 12 digs, five blocks, and a couple aces for Ruffin. There's a great serve to Taylor. And a double called on Moore. You know what, that happened in the fifth set yesterday to Clemson. Now we'll switch sides at 